There are seven different categories of 3D printing recognized in the world today. And at Juggerbot 3D, we've developed three techniques that all fall under the material extrusion category. The first is fused filament fabrication, or FFF, which is a really well-renowned and long-standing additive manufacturing technique, great for a variety of different applications. The second is fused granulate fabrication, or FGF, in which case material in pellet form is extruded through a screw and barrel technology that is very similar to what you'd find with injection molding. This allows for much faster printing with production materials. And direct ink writing, in which case liquid phase inks is dispensed under controlled flow rates on a digitally defined tool path to create 3D models. Each technique has its own place and purpose. Many times, an application will lend itself better to one technology over the others. Sometimes part size or part geometry is a driving factor, but a majority of the time, the technique will be decided ultimately by the material that's best fit for the application. Where we're seeing a lot of demand is in spare parts for very unique equipment. These are the places where there, it's really hard to find some of, the, some of the spare parts that you need, and that's where um, we find the greatest demand. Chromatic 3D Materials is focused on the commercialization of industrial grade flexible materials for 3D printing. We focus on the material development and we partner with companies like Juggerbot to develop the printing technology. One of the things that we've had to do is develop a piece of software that really makes sure that we make quality prints. And so that usually works in tandem with a favorite piece of slicer software that um, our customers like to use. And then it's a post-processor that helps to go through the data and make that part print as well as it can with as few defects as possible. The materials are really the, the cornerstone of the business. So the materials are, are materials that are printed by reaction. And what that allows us to do is that because it reacts as it's going to be put in place, is it allows us to print very solid parts that are flexible and very durable. So we're able to attain really what we call industrial strength materials that are good for mechanical parts, just like any other plastic part that you encounter. Our primary focus right now is on printing thermoset elastomers, and those are specifically polyurethanes. Um, we definitely envision in the future that we'll be extending that to other materials like epoxies or polyesters, but for now we're really focused in the polyurethane elastomer space. The biggest difference with our materials are by far its strength. Parts that are printed with our materials can go directly into real applications. The materials that we print with are no different than the parts that are on the bottom of your shoe or the roller of a roller blade. It's tough material that's made to be beat on. And so, um, so that's really what's special about it. Most flexible materials that you can print with today that have that same level of flexibility don't have that same level of durability. Um, where if you compress it multiple times, it doesn't come back. Our stuff is elastic, it comes back, it's tough. And so it's really made for mechanical processes where you expect um, a material to, to have to go through some wear and tear. Direct ink writing is different. It, it looks the same as traditional fused filament printing in that it's laying something down in a line that you have to follow and trace but it actually is, is quite a bit different because it's really that you're printing with like an ink, a liquid or a gel as opposed to a more solid filament. And so that actually ends up meaning that you need to um, keep an eye on things like how it's filling space. The advantages are that you can make a 100% solid piece, which is fantastic. Um, but it does mean that some of the printing techniques are a little bit different and, um, and require some adaptation. We're really trying to work through how to print parts with a variety of geometries and shapes and different detailed features. And those are things that where we need to rethink how those features are applied to the part. 
And the way we're trying to address that is through developing these software tools that can adapt the, um, the printing paths and the printing code to, to kind of reset those rules for printing so it's all in, all in one box. The kinds of companies that should be paying attention to this change, and it's really a, a newly available technology that hasn't been out there before, are companies that are having trouble finding spare parts. If you're having troubles finding spare parts, and if those spare parts that you're looking for tend to be flexible or rubber, that's really what can be addressed almost immediately. Industrialization of 3D printing is going to go through a, a few waves, and so I think First off is printing things that are difficult to manufacture by traditional processes. Another place where we find is a really good application is actually very large parts, and that's where our partnership with Juggerbot has just been fantastic because Juggerbot has such a nice, large printing platform. So in large parts, it's actually very expensive to make large molds for making cast products and things like that. So that's another great place for 3D printing. The place where I'm really excited about for 3D printing that I think is going to take a little bit longer is when you can start to rethink design of materials. These are the kinds of things that you can do with 3D printing that you could never really put together with conventional processes. There's some level of patience where the technology has to get ready and, and I know our team is working day and night and Juggerbot's working day and night to, to get this technology advanced and ready. That's number one. Um, but the other part is that people need to learn how to design a little bit differently. We have several generations of engineers and designers that need to start thinking about the fact that there's a new technique for making stuff. And that's what we're doing, is making stuff. And there's a new technique for making stuff that might change the rules for how they design. In five years, I expect that chromatic 3D materials will be supplying um, spare parts to a, a very large fraction of our transportation industry. I think that we're really headed strongly down that field. Um, I also think that uh, some of the other elements of our technology will, will be starting to, to come into play. One of my dreams is that we're going to be 3D printing pillows and mattresses um, that are customized. Um, that's definitely within our five-year scope, and I, th I think we'll be getting there. You know, the 3D printing industry is just growing so fast, and it's hard to get your mind around a $10 billion industry that's growing 30% every year. That's really tremendous growth, and what that means is that 3D printing is just finding its way into virtually all the things that are around us on a daily basis. Now, as, as large as 10 billion a year is, it's nowhere close to $1 trillion in manufacturing, but I really think 3D printing can, will, be, will be growing and continue to grow because the, the technology just keeps advancing.